Welcome to the show. Today we're exploring a part of Marlebone that we've never been to before, but I've read a lot about. It's Marlebone Village. We are starting off at the Wallace Collection. The Wallace Collection is a museum in London occupying Hartford House in Manchester Square, the former townhouse of the Seymour family, Marquesses of Hartford. It is named after Sir Richard Wallace, who built the extensive collection along with the Marquesses of Hartford in the 18th and 19th centuries. Just as a little aside, before we continue with the journey, the car over there with the lights on has been trying to position itself in a rather large parking space for a small car for the past five minutes. It was reversing up and down all over the place. I thought I was bad at parking, but whoa, this is pretty diabolical. Manchester Square, Paul and we're in London. I would love to go in here, but I think it's one of these private gardens. That's locked. Yeah, because there was a notice of, from the Manchester Square Trust saying that they would remove anybody who had um, chained their, their bikes. Yeah, they would re remove the bicycles. Um, so I would love to go in. You can sort of get a little bit of a look here. Yeah, look, you see, it says it's a private garden. Oh. Shame. That's really disappointing. Maybe we'll just have to live here. <laughs> ah, a map. Just what we need. Now, I've looked online for this area, and it seems that the central point is Marlebone Lane. So we are here at Manchester Square, and Marlebone Lane, I think, is over, over here somewhere. Well, here's Street, here's High Street. That is strange because we did find it earlier and now it seems to have disappeared again. <laughs> uh, I did see it before. Oh, here. Ah, Marabon Lane. Right there. Okay, so I guess we walk straight two up. Two and then over. Two and over. Okay, let's go. Two and over. Lovely and very expensive houses around here as well. Now it's amazing because I pass through Baker Street on my way to work every day and yet I've never thought to get out and explore this area because it's sort of between Baker Street and Bond Street Oxford Circus. It's that area sort of in the middle um, which I guess like for me definitely has been off the beaten uh, path but um, there's a lot to explore around here, so let's get going. Ah, Marlebone Lane. The Coach Maker's Arms, Paul, if you can't see a pint. Yeah, maybe later. Wow, so there's some scaffolding up over there. But I think further down, we're going to get a real sort of like villagey feel around here. Oh, look, and over there, it's the Ivy Cafe, so you know that you are in a moneyed area around here. It is rather posh, shall we say. So that's why we're dressed up in our best shirts today. And the sun has finally come out. It was raining a little bit before, but absolutely lovely blue skies now. So we're just passing the Ivy. Weatherby Senior School, and I see a a brasserie, 
and oh this lovely little pub here what's this the golden eagle wow maybe we should come in here later yeah well it is lunchtime while we're here and oh my gosh look at this a hat shop ribbons and flowers oh wow look at that every possible type of hat that you could want in there And over this side, we've got some restaurants and that's where we're going to explore now. This is still Marlebone Lane. So we've got the, the brasserie that we saw. Another restaurant, Caldesi. There's a queue of people waiting outside. What's that? Long Trocoat? I don't know what that is. Is it a, a clothes shop? Is it a restaurant? But there's a bookshop around here somewhere that I saw on the online map. Yeah, it looked quite nice. The Golden Hind. But it's amazing, this is a part of London, as I say, that we, we've never actually come to. And we've lived in London, well I've lived in London for over 20 years on and off. And Paul, you've been here for what, 17 years? Oh, well, well, not in London, but in England. And, you know, it's amazing just to think this is just a few miles from where we live, and yet we've never been here. Oh, look, there's Paul over there. So we stepped momentarily onto Marlebone High Street, but there's all these other little sort of streets running off at New Cavendish Street behind me over here and St Vincent Street over there which is where I think we might go to next. Oh, oh okay. So shall we see where we are now? So we were where the oh, I'm really bad with this map right now. We should go up this way. So we were up here and I think we New did like a street. I think we did like a bit of a loop and then we came back out here. Well maybe we'll leave uh, St. Vincent Street for so later. later. Yeah. So we're on New Cavendish Street now. And uh, it sort of runs parallel with Marlebone Lane, I think. And I can see the BT Tower in front of us so you tell how close that we actually are to central well this is central london but to, to oxford street i suppose there's lots of exclusive shops around here right now we are hungry as i said it's lunchtime. we might end up going back to one of those pubs very interesting coffee place watch house or modern coffee um, I think it's got an identity crisis. I don't know what it's actually called. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I think we want something a little bit more substantial than a pastry and coffee right now. So we've walked round, we're back at the hat shop over there and the Golden Eagle. And I think we're gonna go in there and even if they don't have food, we'll have a drink.
was a really nice pop-up. Yeah, the, whoops, <laughs> the Golden Eagle it's called. And just reading the back of this card, if I can try not to drop it, it says they also have piano evenings. Join us for a traditional pub sing-along. Now, they didn't do any food, so I think it might be a liquid lunch that we're having. The Ivy, of course, is opposite us. Uh, I don't think we're going in there. And there is another pub. Um, but this was a really, really nice place. It was quite quiet. And it was off the beaten track, so that's why it isn't as busy as one expects. So you had the Cornwall, Cor is it Korlev? Korlev. Korlev. And that is a lager. Yeah, it's lager. And you had that before when we visited Penzance. Penzance, which was before we started the show. So we're going to have to go back, I think, to, to visit Penzance. And I had an Indian summer. It was a, uh, it was a golden ale. Yeah. yeah. And it, I thought at, at, at the start it had a little bit of an aftertaste, but I think it was just me sort of getting used to it. So it was actually fine. So, yeah, I'd highly recommend the Golden Eagle. Oh, I like the look of this. At the movies, original film posters. This is a nice shot. Look at that. Back at the Coachmaker's Arms. Now there is a menu outside, does that mean they have food? I hope so. Let's have a look. As I say, it could end up just being a liquid lunch. Oh, there is a food menu. You want food? Look at that, there's a range of snacks and starters, mains, grills and sides. Shall we see if they're serving? Yes. On you go then. I got the Freedom. I don't know what the Freedom is, but it's a longer. And mine was called a Lush London, or was it a London Lush? Something like that. London Lush. <laughs> and we have ordered some sticky chicken wings and two of, two of those. Don't give me a finger like that, Paul. And some fries. So that should tide us over I'm because. I'm tell you how much the price is. Oh, I think I can guess. It was about 40. 41. 44? How much were these drinks? Well, the food was 26. So the, these pints were at nine pounds each or something. OMG. I think it was cheaper at the other place. Uh, yes, but they didn't have food. And we are meeting friends for a late lunch. A late lunch. <laughs> a late lunch. Lunch <laughs> um, Early dinner. Yeah, I said it was a liquid, a liquid lunch, a liquid lunch. Um, yeah, but we aren't eating for another couple of hours. You know what? I don't normally have this, so. <laughs> wow. So it's fine. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Well, we've just come from the uh, yes. Coachmaker's Arms and we had, you had a, one of the, a, a Freedom Lager. You said it wasn't that good. It was all right. And what did I have? Uh, I've forgotten now. You had the London... Oh, the London Lush. That's right. 
And Which yeah, you are. Yes, indeed. Yes. And we also had uh, chicken wings and fries just to tide us over before we meet our friends later on for a very late lunch, early dinner, and we'll show you that as well. But just before we go, I've just discovered the other part of Marlebone Lane. So we are going to take a little walk down here because there was a bookshop that I saw on the map and I want to see if I can find it. So what did you think of the Coachmaker's Arms? It was quite good, um, a little pricey, but yeah. Yeah, there was a service charge, which was almost the same price as a pint. Um, but I think that is because we got the food and we did need the yes. food, so we didn't mind paying it. Well, Paul didn't mind paying it. Thank you. <laughs> Um, but this is a lovely little street here. Oh I've got to be mindful of the time because we are meeting our friends in about 25 minutes. We might actually have to take the tube two stops no. um, just to make up the time. But um, there's one of these, what is it called, a Lena store? There's one of those on um, Old Compton Street. It. It's one of those Italian, traditional oh. Italian shops where they sell all the pastas, the oils, the, the truffle oils and everything. Look at this. This is a hardware store. David Penton and Son. This is absolutely oh, fabulous. Oh. I just love the look of this. Fabulous. And what is this? Koei Bird. Don't know what that is. And we'll just cross over. This is the end of Marlebone Lane now. And uh, there's a few more restaurants. And this comes out on to Wigmore Street. So it's a bit more commercial, I think. But yeah, we're going to head on down to Drummond Street now, which is near Euston Station. And that's where we're having our lunch with our friends. So come with us. Don't let the opportunity to subscribe slip away. Subscribe to It's Paul and Marcus on YouTube. Welcome back. We've been walking for about almost half an hour and we're both desperate for the toilet. Well over, <laughs> yeah, well over one mile. So we're in Drummond Street, which is near Euston. And there's lots of Indian restaurants around here, which is what our friends were talking about. And they are already in one Ravi of the Shankar. Ravi Shankar. So we think that it's across this next road. So we just pass the Crown and Anchor. Oh, this person's letting us cross. Thank you very much. Walking down. The side we're on. Yeah, it should be. Okay, well, we'll keep walking. Yep, I see it. You see it? It is this uh, green building. This one right here. Oh, this one here? Yeah. Ravi Shankar. Oh, so it is. Well, let's go in then. Ah! Here you are! We have arrived. Oh my god, not filming us, are you? You're eating already? Well, I think it's time that we eat. I'm having the buffet. Ooh, a buffet! And uh, Dickie's, Dickie's not. Okay. No? So, and you've got an hour to get the buffet, guys. All right, well, we better stop this episode now. Paul, you have something to say. Thank you for subscribing. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. The subscribe button. We do appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Yeah, it's great. Subscribe.